any artist that is in pursuit of a career is facing fear, obsessive self-judgment, overthinking, mental and emotional barriers. My name is Luther Mallory. This is the State of the Artist podcast. State of the Artist podcast. This is about why creative people suffer so badly day to day in life. Why is it so up and down? Mike Tyson has a great quote, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's, I'm either at the top of the mountain or at the bottom of the ocean. I don't know how to live in the middle of life. Tell me that is you. Tell me that is you as an artist. Fucking yeah. So creative people suffer. Why do we suffer? Most of us suffer because we cannot be present in almost any moment, all day, every day. We have a real problem getting out of our head. That's usually it. Think our way into depression, okay? Too much thinking. So, what is really happening there? Two things. Thing the first. Regular people, regular people meaning non-artists, not you, Regular people get distracted 14 times a day. That's a made-up statistic. 14 times a day they think about something and they zone out and they giggle about a joke or about a pair of shoes they saw and they go on with their lives. Creative people, you, get distracted 837 times a day. And it's about anything and it's forever. It lasts forever. So you see a lamp and you zone out about how it could be a better lamp for 45 minutes. And you do that 800 times a day and you miss your whole life. Why is that? Because you're creative. You're fucking awesome at thinking of shit. So that's what you do. You think of shit. All day, you go, that's interesting, that's interesting, that's interesting, that's interesting. Everybody else goes, that's fine, and they leave it. You say, that's interesting, and then you harbor that, and you work on that. We workshop that. Yesterday, I, I, th- I thought of kickboxing with a pen. What is that? A pen? a writing utensil. I thought about kickboxing a pen and I went into my mind for 14 minutes. That's not helpful. That will never do anything. So most people don't have those thoughts because they're not that creative and most people who do just dismiss them. But there's another thing happening besides the distraction of creativity. Thing the first is the distraction that creativity causes. Thing the second is the uncertainty of your career path, causing you to every moment dive into the mind to analyze something uh, and decide you're not doing the right thing because you're not seeing results all the time. So you go, is this going to progress my career, this thing I'm doing right now? (laughs) And you go up here and your brain goes, I don't know, it could be something else. And you roll that around and you snowball that. "Eh, I don't know, is this this okay? Or God forbid you're watching a movie, you know, with a loved one or playing with your dog or something. And you're trying to be present there. You're throwing the thing for Buster. (laughs) But your brain's going like, what are you doing? Why did we get a dog? Why are we here with this dog when we could be pursuing excellence in our career? Why did we decide this? Get the fuck on your computer right now and send some emails, you idiot. And it spirals. It it spirals into three days off. So there's always this problem of uncertainty sneaking up in the brain going, uh, you can't be present because you need to be working on something. So, thing the first, the creative distractions, thing the second the uncertainty causing uh, overwhelm and self-doubt about your career progress. So the thing to note on thing the first, which is uh, the creative um, problem of, uh, of distractions, is not 
everything has to be worked on. Okay? A hundred good, a hundred ideas in a day. One of them is worth jotting down. The rest are useless and stupid. Just consider them that. Okay? When you think of a melody, which is all the time, and you go, I got to record that. I got to change. I got to switch everything I'm doing right now in my life. I don't care if it's date night. I don't care if I'm at school because this melody is the one I got to get it down. And the thing is, it's awesome, the melody, because you made it, because you're creative. All of your melodies are good. Don't always pursue that. At the very most, jot it down quickly and move on. But what we do is we deep dive the thing. Right? That melody. Okay, just give me 10 minutes here and go to the bathroom and get on your voice notes and stuff and sideline your life for this thing that you've convinced yourself is going to be really important. But let's decide way less of those things are important. That's how you do that. Deal with the distractions by awareness of the distraction and then go, is that really important? Is this really a life-changing invention like I always think it is? And just go, I'm going to just stop there. Don't. So 90% of the time, don't 10% of the time, write it down and move on. And then work on that shit when the day shows up where you go, I'm actually working on this shit. All right? So awareness of the distractions. Then on the side of uncertainty, you can't develop it anyway. You can't get it if you want. All that it's doing when you decide to watch a movie and you go, I'm going to relax. Movie. What? What did he say? What is happening in this movie? Because you're not hearing anything except for how fucked up your guilt and shame cycle is. You roll the Rolodex of guilt and shame out of your closet and dust the thing off and spin the motherfucker and just go, what should I feel bad about in this moment? Well, you're not as far as you want to be in life. Your career's not going as well as, as it could. Do you have any fans? Do you have enough fans? Spin it again. That's what happens. And you can't live there because you never end up relaxing. Right? It makes no sense to relax, but, let you, but your brain goes, but I'm going to be working during relaxing, by the way. No, you have to relax to recharge. Imagine I said, run a marathon. And you said, how long is that? And I go, actually run forever and never stop. You'd be like, I can't because I need breaks where I rest because that's how it... That's what it means to be a human who survives this shit. I need that, right? Rest, action, rest, action, right? Between those two things. But what we do is we go action. And then as artists, because of that, the dramatic impulse to guilt ourselves for not being as far as we want to be, we come down to rest, but we don't rest. Maybe our body rests, but our mind is still in action. So you don't actually get to rest. So how you solve that is you become aware of that problem and you go, I actually need to watch a movie. I need to watch Bad News Bears. I have to. And enjoy it. And you know what happens when you do enjoy that? The creative flow opens up. The opposite thing happens that you think. You think, if, if I relax, then I'm not working. No, no, no. If you relax, your brain will fuck off and the creative flow from the source energy of the universe will hit you in the face. And you'll be like, wow, I'm actually creating here. And your time with your dog will be creative. And you'll throw the ball and you'll be creating uh, closeness and bonding. And it'll be beautiful. Instead of, I'm half distracted. Sorry, I wish I could be here for you, dog. But I'm not. That's not a good way to do that. So awareness here is everything. The creative distractions, because you're a little bit of a genius, limit them and don't pursue everything. Don't always work. And then give yourself relaxation because you need to relax. Not just the body, the mind. So tonight, watch a movie guilt-free. Watch a movie and go, what happens if I watch a movie and my brain goes, this is what we've decided to do. And you realize, this is how I recharge. This is why creative people suffer. State of the Artist Podcast. Getting better at ending these every single time.